Hello everybody and welcome to my 22nd VBA 2010 tutorial and this tutorial is going to show you how to use for loops to go through a list of objects rather than through a array or, or just through an integer values. So this is just going to add another word into our for loop. So the first one I'm going to do is just going to cycle through my sheets and it's just going to rename them. So let's go for each and then we want a variable again I'm going to call it WS but this variable isn't going to be an integer variable this variable is going to be a worksheet variable or a worksheet object and then we want to put for each worksheet and then in rather than to this workbook dot sheets and then we just want to put next WS so what this is going to allow us to do is just cycle through each of the sheet names and then we can just access it using this WS. So let's just put for each WS, WS and then reference and then you can use any of the functions that lead off of a worksheet. So the one I'm going to use is dot name and I'm going to rename it to the name as it is and then I'm going to just add a little added I'm added so just going to go through all of the sheet names it's just going to add I'm added onto them so if we press play now and then you notice over here on our sheet objects that all of them have been renamed to put have I'm added in there you if we get rid of that we just play this again and then you'll notice it comes up with an error because we're trying to set the name of one to this name of one that I have already. So don't do that, that would be silly. But uh, you get the idea of how you can use that. If we want to put a little counter in there, because you don't get a counter when you're doing it like this. So if you want to put a counter in there still, then you can still put a, a, a dim counter as integer. Set it equals to zero, or set it equals whatever value you want, and then just increment it yourself. So counter equals counter plus one and then you can use it within your code then so and counter and then it's just going to set them equal to the different ones so if we run this again and it's not going to like it so and it's because we've already got some of them named as it so let's just set our counter equal to five press play and then you notice that they've gone six seven eight so first one it's gone plus one and changed that to six and then it's just gone through them all and added it each time so that's how you get around not having a counter let's just see how much time we've got left plenty so i'm going to show you two more you can use this for each and in with quite a lot of different groups of objects so any, any set of objects you can think of you can probably use them with so i'm just going to show you two more so the next one i'm going to show you is for each wb in application oh, application dot workbooks and this is going to let you go through all of the the workbooks that you've got open so I've only got one open so let's just open up another one so file new blank workbook and I'm going to go through and I'm just going to save them. I'm just going to save them all, to be honest. So let's go to wb dot save, and then we'll press play. And I've not changed that to wb, so press play again. And uh, the new workbook I've opened up is a macro free workbook, so. Uh, it's coming up with this prompt to say it needs to be saved as a macro enabled workbook. So to continue saving as a macro free workbook, click next, click no. And then it's going to say X much it's going to save as a macro free workbook. But let's not worry about that. If we just go into our book two and go to file, save as, and then we want to change it to. Macro enabled workbook. And then this just save that down, and then when we do it now, 
and we go through it, it's going to save them all for us. And then the last one I want to show you, that's how you do go through the workbooks. The last one I'll show you is just how to loop through the selection that you've got. So let's say we've got this selected. We can access this information. And I've got too many books open now, so I'm going to close one of them down. Um, which one do I want to close? I want to close down book three, so let's get rid of that one. Done. Right, so let's look through our selection. So for each, um, we want C alpha, stand for cell. In selection dot cells. So this is going to loop through all of our cells, and it's going to we're then going to go cl equals cl dot row times cl dot column. And to be honest, you're not going to be able to learn. You're not going to be able to learn all of the the members of of each of these these objects. Uh, but generally, if you if you know you want to do something, then you can find out how to do it. Just Google it, or uh, if you just tr try it out, uh, or if you go cells and then dot, and then it's going to come up with a list of all of them. Uh, so you notice that somewhere on here we should have row and column. So there you can see rows. And uh, so let's just press play on that after we go in here and select something. So select that. Alt plus F8. Press run. And it doesn't work, which is always good. So why isn't it working? Because we haven't put dot value in there. So let's just change that to dot value. Come in here, select some cells, F8, run, and then there we go. So we've set the value of all our things now. So that's how you'd leap through a selection. So I think you probably got the idea now. If you've got any questions or if you're trying to reference a set of objects that doesn't seem to be working for you, then please drop comments in the below and I will try my best to answer them as quickly as possible. And so that's it for this tutorial and uh, I hope to catch you in the next tutorial where we're going to continue going through for loops.